This is crazy. So guys, this is the new ZenBook Duo. All right, it's a fully functional dual screen laptop with two 14 inch displays and it can work as two separate screens or as one large screen. And just look at how flawless this thing is, okay? So the keyboard, which is magnetically attached, it can be easily detached. You open the stand and that's it. Now you've got a dual screen laptop for the size of one. Now, once you're done, you just fold it back and the keyboard just latches on magnetically and that's it. It all packs it up into this compact piece, which is super portable. Uh, it barely weighs anything and you can easily just carry it around. Imagine you're basically walking with a dual monitor setup with a keyboard and trackpad. Now, there are two, three other ways of using these screens. So if you're a programmer or someone like me who researches on one side and scripts on the other, you could use it this way. There's also a sharing mode that lets you show your screen without people looking over your shoulder. So it makes it very convenient for you to just share. The other really cool thing is that you can use this without this keyboard at all because you know both of these are actually touch screens and so if you tap with six fingers it fires up the virtual keyboard which can be used to input text and it has its own trackpad as well now of course this is not going to be as fast and accurate as a physical keyboard but you've got the option and that's better than nothing and wait it gets crazier so you could swipe down with six fingers to bring up utilities and depending on which app you're using, it'll give you common controls that you could tap and make things work faster. And obviously all of that is completely customizable and you can, uh, you know, create your own combinations depending on which app or software you're using. But you know, here's the thing, Windows does not have anything natively to be able to manage two screens. And I think that's where Asus has done a brilliant job of letting you manage these two screens as if they're part of one. So if you see, they've got a screen expert icon here, which if you tap, gives you a set of controls. So you could independently manage screen brightness of both the displays from here, activate or shut off virtual keyboard, check your physical keyboard's battery, then turn off the second screen, turn on sharing mode from here, and also just save groups of open apps as a task group, which you can then launch anytime. So you can really manage these two screens as if they're part of one unit, and I think that was really important. Look, when I'm working on my desk, I generally tend to use two screens, one to research and read and the other to script or make notes. If I'm not on my desk, I'm using a tablet to research and laptop to write on. And this lets me do that anywhere. It's basically a dual screen setup on the go. And it's actually a lot better than carrying two devices and it's more economical too. Anyway, I think I've obsessed enough about, uh, you know, what these screens can do for you, but what about rest of the laptop? So let's talk about that. So despite its form factor, you get all the necessary ports, a full-sized USB port, two Thunderbolt 4 USB Type-C ports, one HDMI 2.1 port, and an audio combo jack. I actually really miss the uh, Ethernet or the LAN port, but I understand, you know, that's just gonna make this laptop thick, which we don't want. Anyway, now let's talk about the display because, well, that's pretty much where you will be spending most of your time looking at. So both of these displays are Asus Lumina OLED displays, okay? And they're validated for various certifications. They are both 1920 by 1200 pixels and 60 hertz of refresh rates. And they peak at 500 nits of brightness. Now the outdoor visibility is actually quite decent and the front camera has ALS into it. So it kind of detects, you know, the light around you. And accordingly, it'll either reduce the brightness or increase the brightness so that, you know, your visibility isn't compromised. Now, by the way, there's also a 120 hertz refresh rate um, model, but th the availability for that varies by region. So you might want to check if it's there in your region. And guys, since these are OLED displays, they tend to have more color volume and hence more color accuracy as well. And they're more battery efficient too. But depending on your use, you could actually just switch to a color profile that best fits your requirement within, you know, this My Asus app. By the way, Asus does have some tactics built in with Asus OLED Care uh, within the My Asus app, and you could tweak them to protect your OLED from burn in. Now, the important thing here is that both of these displays have Gorilla Glass protection, which I think is really clever because, you know, you might be putting this keyboard on and off again and again. And it's really a good idea to have a layer of scratch uh, resistance or protection on it just so that it doesn't, you know, deteriorate over time. But you know, the second display actually poses a problem. See, OLED displays, they need to remain cool. And the second display is in the same plane as the motherboard, which has the chip, which can run hot. So to keep it cool, there's a heat spreader behind the OLED panel. They've maintained a slim air gap between the panel and the chip, and they've placed a graphite sheet on the bottom cover to ensure that the display never goes above 45 degrees. And of course, you could also run the displays in dim brightness so that they run as cool as possible. And that also helps with increasing battery life. But what about performance? Can this handle daily tasks easily? What about, you know, significantly intense tasks like gaming or video editing? 
And how's the battery life? If you see, specifications wise, it's got Intel's latest Ultra Core chip. The variant I have has the Ultra 9, but you could also get this in the Ultra 7 and the Ultra 5 configuration. And guys, these Ultra chips from Intel are extremely battery efficient. Plus, this is Intel Evo certified. Uh, they've also got much improved, uh, you know, Intel Arc graphics, and they've got dedicated NPUs. And how that helps you, I'll talk about in a minute, so hang tight. Anyway, it's also using the uh, latest DDR5X RAM so that you get Seriously, good performance. And the one I'm using here is about 2.4 lakhs uh, in India or about $1,700 in the US. Now, of course, if you're only looking to get this laptop for office use and a bit of content consumption, then I think even the Core 5 configuration with 16 gigs of RAM is sufficient. But if you wanna do all of that with a very snappy performance and a bit of content creation on the side, then I think the Ultra 7 configuration is better suited. But if you want the best of the best, you get the Ultra 9 configuration. And luckily, that's the one I have. And you know, it's obviously multitasking on this is a breeze. I could switch between apps smoothly without any issues and work on multiple apps easily. In terms of video editing, you know, I could easily edit 4K videos I shot using my phone and work with multiple layers. But as I added more layers of text and light graphics, it did start to slow down a bit. But hey, I could just reduce the playback resolution to make it work smoother. What I'm trying to say is this is actually fine for casual content creation, even in 4K, but probably not for, you know, intense high-end professional video editing. Having said that, this isn't a gaming laptop either. So Asus has its own ROG and tough lineup for that. However, you can play games like Apex Legends and Valorant with playable frame rates at optimized graphic settings without any issues. I think I get respectable frame rates, I would say. But here's the cool part about Ultra chips from Intel. They have their own NPU units. So let's say you use any of the capabilities of the laptop, like, you know, AI-based camera uh, that requires you to blur the background or, you know, maintain eye contact or even auto framing. It uses the NPU, as you can see, you know, the spikes here, and this actually puts less load on the CPU or the GPU. And that's actually one of the things that makes these Ultra chips so battery efficient. Now, let's talk about battery life, okay? So it's got a 75 watt hour battery capacity. Now, that's just capacity, but what does it translate into? So, you know, I charged it to 100% and disconnected at about 8.45 a.m. And this went on till about 2.30 p.m. nonstop. Both the screens were turned on at all times at about 50% brightness. And I was using regular apps like Word, Slack. I had some music playing in the background. Uh, sometimes I would watch a YouTube video while I was researching. Um, I was also downloading Valorant in the background. Then I downloaded Adobe Creative Cloud in the background. All of that, you know, I was getting like, what? That's nearly six hours with both the screens turned on. And that actually is pretty good, right? Like we know that displays eat up a lot of the battery and this is running two of those. So commendable. And this, by the way, is the Core Ultra 9 chip, which consumes more power. If you get yourself like the Core 5, you will get even more battery life than the six hours that I got. And if using Core 5, you had only one screen running, you could literally touch 10 hours with it. And unlike most laptops, this is the charger for this laptop. It's a 65 watt GAN charger. Um, and the other thing you really need is just a cable to charge it, you know, just goes into a type C port. And it's a GAN charger, so you can use it to charge your tablets, your smartphones, your uh, wearables, anything. So carry one charger and you're sorted. All right, now guys, let's talk about a couple of other things like, you know, the keyboard, the trackpad, some of the software features, and all of these things also add to the experience of using this laptop. So first of all, the keyboard, it's actually quite good. So it's got a decent key travel, uh, function keys at the top, and not sure if you can notice, it's got these dish-shaped keys that are really comfortable to type on but it's amazing how sleek the keyboard is. You can easily just, you know, keep it anywhere. There's a slight rubberized feel to the base of this, so it has some anti-skid property, though not much. But what's important is that it doesn't feel like a, like a flimsy keyboard. It's like really sturdy and, you know, typing on this is, is really enjoyable. It's really good. And there's no loss of, you know, accuracy on this. And here's what it sounds like. And so if you see, it's actually on the quiet side. And you know, if you were to use it in very silent spaces, it's not going to annoy people around you. I know that kind of stuff annoys me. The trackpad too, it's quite nice. Very smooth feedback, has an anti-fingerprint feature and it remains clean for the most part. The clicks like the keyboard are again, very silent. And finally guys, let's talk about the speakers. And you know, if you look at most compact laptops, they actually suffer from low volume, uh, flat sound, and like almost no bass. 
But this one, it's so much better than those. I mean, it's actually significantly louder than most compact uh, laptops that I've ever seen. And there's some sense of, you know, richness and depth to the sound that comes out of it. Look, it's still a compact device. So you're not going to get the kind of bass that you might actually desire. But I think it's got very respectable volume levels. And the clarity of vocals is really good. So, you know, if you're using it for calls like on Skype, Zoom or Teams for that kind of stuff, this is really, really good. Additionally, these support Dolby Atmos and they're tuned by Harman Kardon. And that's pretty much it, guys, about the ASUS ZenBook Duo. I mean, if I had to pick, personally, uh, a work laptop, I think this would be it because it's compact, it's portable, it's powerful enough for my daily tasks, like, you know, office work, and uh, it's an on-the-go dual-screen setup sitting in my bag, and it works flawlessly. And look, everything else is actually just cherry on top for me. You know, you like, you get really good battery life, you get uh, these gallium nitride GAN PD chargers that can charge everything else, really compact, uh, and you get really good speakers for its size and you get all the ASUS software goodies. So I think overall, it's a really good package. But yeah, if there's still anything that I did not answer or you still have questions or doubts about this laptop, please feel free to ask me in the comments section. Uh, I've got this laptop, you know, I'll test it out for you guys and let you know, uh, answer to your questions within the comments itself. And if you guys enjoyed watching the video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification icon and mark all really, really, really helps the channel grow. I'll see you guys in the next one.